come to order. The Home Rule Charter Commission. Let's have the uh, invocation and the pledge. Mr. Red, would you say the invocation? People, let's all bow our heads and thank the Lord for letting us have this meeting tonight. Also, all the people who have come here, let them have a safe journey home after the conclusion of our meeting. In God's name we trust. Amen. Amen. Ms. Diane, pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Diane, would you do the roll call? I mean, Ms. Suzanne, I'm sorry. Present. Michael LeBlanc. I was notified that he would not be here. Charles Shivers. Present. Lincoln Fluot Jr. Here. Mr. Kenneth Leary is absent also. He's notified that he would not be here. Mark Stewart is not here either. He is out of town. Uh, Greg Duplessis is absent also. He is tied up at his plant. Uh, Robert Poche. Here. Diane Ayo. Here. Chipman uh, Redley. Here. We're now open for anyone that has any comments on, <coughs> Six and four. on any item that's on the agenda. Would you please sign in? There's no one here, so we'll move on to the next item. The adoption of the minutes of August 25th. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes that type. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Against? Motion passes. Item number five, the reviewing of the Home Rule Charter. I would like to make a comment before we get started. Reviewing these articles, this, this commission sent out requests for comments from the parish council and the parish president in the areas in which they would like this charter to address the Home Rule Charter. I have asked Mr. Porsche to take the lead in that in taking these comments that we received from them and bring them forth to the commission in the sections that we talk about that pertain to those sections in which they were interested in the commission addressing. So with that in mind now, the first agenda item on the agenda for the discussion of the Home Rule Charter will be Article Number 1, the reform of government. It's now open the floor. I got a motion on the floor to have a second. I got a motion on the floor and a second to leave it as it is. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? A motion passes. Next item is powers and functions. Article number two, powers and functions. It's open for discussion. I'll make a motion to leave it as it is. I have a question for legal. Okay. Is my intent at some point to interject the fact that uh, major drainage is not under the administration, is under the uh, council? It, would this be the place to, to address that? Or for the, the, I just, I'm not clear as to where I should interject that. Right now, the, the council has the power, total power of major drainage. Mm -hmm. it, at one time, was under the uh, par parish administration. It was, as you well know, it was moved by a vote of the council back to them, and I would like to see it placed. In the charter? That's correct. And I don't know if this is the correct place to put it. That's why I'm asking you. Uh, I think it, it could be placed in Article 2, powers and functions of the governing authority. 
So that that might be something you'd want to discuss tonight or, or put on the agenda for another meeting. I, I'm not sure I understood what you meant. I, I certainly think it could be placed under Article Two, powers and functions of the governing authority. So that might be something you want to address tonight or, or maybe put on the agenda for another meeting. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Ms. Chairman, uh, there is, according to legal uh, change, I would like to see made to this. It, I'm trying to get direction for you whether you want to try to do them individually tonight or just go through it and see which one we need to work on and come back at, at them at a, at a later point. It's up to you. I would say let's address it now and find an answer and recommendations and move on to where we don't have to come back to it and redo, rehash things maybe that we can discuss and finish tonight. What, what, does, what is the consensus of the commission? Ms. Diane? I, I think his point is valid. I think it wants more discussion. I, I'm certainly not opposed to any further discussion. I also think it might come if, if under, in a better spot, perhaps in departments. Um, it's, it's not really a department, though. Okay. It's, it's who's actually governing it, whether it's but the administration mm -hmm. or the council is the only thing at issue. I'm not sure. That's why I asked you what, what mm -hmm. section do we need to address it in. It seems like it could pertain to this one. There may be a, a better one. I don't know. Perhaps the Article 4, the, the governing authority, if you want to place it there, I think that would be uh, appropriate. Best love up to you, ma'am. Section 412 addresses the powers of the governing authority, and that might be a good place to to uh, address this issue. 412. Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll withdraw that and go wait till we get to that section. Okay. Do do we need them? A motion to this effect? Are you was, that, you was no, asking no. as a motion or just as a uh, general question? It was not a motion. It was just okay, a general question. That's what I thought. Okay, does anybody? Uh, let's see. We're on Article Two, powers and functions. Does anybody have any any more questions, discussions on Article Two, powers and functions of, of the Home Rule Charter? Okay. We got a motion on the floor to leave it as is. Do I have a second? second. Got a second. There any further discussions? I have a motion and a second on the floor to leave Article Number Two, as stated in the Home Rule Charter, present charter. All in favor? Aye. Any against? Motion passes. Article Two will remain as as is. Article Three. Executive Branch, Section 302, Compensation, is now open for discussion. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. We did, we did have a request to uh, address this particular section, and it was in regards to the uh, salary of the president. The suggestion was that we follow what some of the our neighboring parishes are doing, that is, to make the pay of the parish president equal to that of the sheriff of that parish. What, At the proper time, I'll make that motion. Okay. Do we have any, any more discussion on, on Article, uh, on Section uh, 3.02 of Article 3, Compensation? Do we have any more discussion? Mr. Mr. Luke. Robert. Uh, I uh, I also had that as my agenda, and I also had it. Uh, it will be determined by the state of Louisiana legislative action. Is that correct? The sheriff's salary is uh, controlled by the uh, legislature. The sheriff cannot automatically grant themselves the increase in salary. They have to first go to the legislature and get approval from the legislature. Right. Okay. Do and, it, it would, it, and if the sheriff gets theirs, the parish president would automatically get theirs at the same time frame. Do we need to put that in, you think, Robert? As, I wouldn't, I would, or, or is that state law? Or you think there's, we, there's no state law in this because we, we're governed by, by Home Rule Charter. So if, if it is in the charter, that's the way it will be. I got a comment on that. There are, seven, there are several other parishes that 
follow that same procedure in granting the parish president a raise? Well, if I may, Mr. Chair, yes, it does a couple of things. Uh, first off, I think it's a fair thing to do. Secondly, it takes the politics out of it. Uh, if y'all can recall uh, the last time that the parish president, and he did receive an increase in salary since the original charter was written, uh, it's, it's done through the council. And of course, at, at that point in time, um, we'd like to think there's not politics involved in that, but there may have may not have been. But this will assure that there will never be. And that's one of the main considerations that I'm giving for this. I do think that the parish president uh, deserves the salary, that of the sheriff. I think it's not out of line to ask for that. I think that it will resolve a lot of the problems and bring it in line with what, like you mentioned, what some of the other charters in our neighboring parishes are doing. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Casio. It, it also brings it in line with uh, PAR's recommendations as well, which yeah, they're a, a, a tad different, but I'm, I would be comfortable with Mr. Poche's recommendation. Mm -hmm. Mr. Poche, do you know what the parish salary, parish, what the sheriff's salary is right now? I, I do not. In relation to the, to the salary of the parish president at it, this it's point? A, it's above what the parish president is currently making, but I don't know the exact numbers. Okay. But as long as we state that it be the same as, right, it will be the same as. Okay. When would when would this take effect? Upon the vote of the people. Okay. Do I have a motion on on the floor? I'll make it a motion, and I will, I, I'd like to, for legal to give me the correct wording for my motion, since she'll be writing it up. Uh, I would I would make the motion that the parish president's salary. Um, be amended to be the same as the sheriff, and when the sheriff gets a raise, um, that he will also get a raise, and I'll certainly provide you with that language when we put this together. That's what I said. I thought you were going to give me legal speak. <laughs> <laughs> I second the motion. I have a motion on the floor and a second that the salary of the parish president be tied in to the salary of the parish uh, sheriff. Effective upon the vote of the people. Upon the vote of the people. It's open for a vote. Do we have a, uh, help, anybody in favor? Uh, 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 anybody opposed? Motion passes. Let's address. That was A, sir. A, right. Let's address B now. Uh, the governing authority uh, having uh, reimbursements. Does anybody have any comments on se on uh, Article Section B of uh, Article Three, Section Three Hundred Two? Leave it as okay. It is. Just leave it as it is. Nothing pushing. We can again check with legal on this, but I think that they made some adjustments to that where they restricted it to some extent. Is that correct? I don't believe there's an ordinance that addresses this. It's, it's not an ordinance, no. But they, uh, like that travel expense, didn't they put a limit on? Uh, that that applies to the council and parish employees. But that's not. Um, that's the right, there is no okay. ordinance. This this allows the governing authority authority to enact an ordinance regarding uh, reimbursement uh -huh. for uh, reasonable expenses, perhaps Let's draw my question, mileage. Withdraw my question. Okay. The executive branch. Okay. All right, we'll move on. Next, we didn't vote on this. Particular. Do you do it? You have a motion. We on this oh, you I'm meant that we leave that article as it is, that section B. Do I have a second? Second. Got a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes that we leave uh, Article 3, Section 302, Paragraph B, as is. We go to Section. 303 of Article 3. Powers and duties of the President is now open for discussion. I would like Ms. to have some. Ms. Cashel. I, I would like to see the President have the power to appoint his department heads. And I'm trying to find, I'll have to go back to. As far as recommendations on that. Let's take them in order. Yeah. Okay, 
Ms. Cascio, let's start with, or, with uh, paragraph A. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm good with chapter, that. As the president, president should be the executive officer mm -hmm. of the parish, okay? Or, uh, pa uh, paragraph A. Okay. Do we have any discussions on that? I make a motion we accept that he is. Leave it as it is. Second. There's a motion and second on the floor to leave. Uh, paragraph A, as is. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Paragraph B. <coughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Clawett, I was out of order on that one. I, my notes That's are... That's quite all right. Quite all right, Ms. Cascio. Thank you. Quite all right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Paragraph B. That might be it. That might be it. Uh, I'm have to go back and power. look. I'm not, I'm not going to read each one of these because we'll be here all night long. I, I'm assuming that every one of us on this commission has read this, yes. this uh, home rule charter, and uh, I'll just uh, address it as the paragraphs and... We'll take it from there. So, paragraph B. Does anybody have any comments on that? Yes. Ms. Cashew, I believe this comes under yours. Yeah, it's the one at... I, I would like for us to look very carefully at 3.03 .03 powers and duties of the president under section B. It appears that PAR's recommendations were that this was the area in which the president's uh, power to appoint his department heads and at, the, at whose pleasure they serve should have been included. I don't think that that's what B does in under 3.03, .03, but that may be a point that uh, legal will have to take a look at and see where the appropriate spot is for it. We're kind of in the same position we were in on the earlier one. I'm not sure where this goes. I'm, I'm not clear what you're trying to. No, I'm not either, Ms. Cashew. Please. The powers and duties of the president under PAR's recommendations, they're, it's, it read under Section B. The president shall have the power to appoint subject to ratification by resolution by at least a majority of the authorized membership. such department heads as may be provided by this charter or by ordinance and who shall serve at the pleasure of the president. That was their recommendation for the wording of that particular um, section. It, it doesn't seem, it seems to consolidate B and F. If, am I, are you following me, Lindsay, or am I just not understanding this? Yes, I'm following you. I'm looking in the powers of Section 412 of the Governing Authority. I think there's a provision in there that allows the Governing Authority to uh, remove the department heads. Right. And, and that's what this, I think what their recommendation was, was that this be consolidated. And therefore, it would provide clarity. And then you would strike the next later motion, I mean later article under the governing authority under section four. Mm -hmm. This one this one can probably take yeah, four point oh nine would then be struck as a result of the fact that this was consolidated under the powers of the president and worded per their recommendation. Now, I'm certainly not uh, tied, glued to this thing, but I, I really thought it was an important area. It's been a concern of mine from the beginning in this endeavor, and I would like to see us have some discussion about it. Is anybody? Mr. Luke? Mr. Chair, I'd like to comment on it, uh, keeping uh, Section 303B and F combined. I can see a problem in the fact that uh, when we're saying the president would have the authority hire and fire, basically, and then in F, the governing authority will have the power to reinstate that employee. And uh, just hypothetically, I can see a little problem with that. If I was the parish president and I had a very serious problem with an employee 
that received me terminating him mm -hmm. and the governing authority of putting him back, well, I don't know if I wouldn't fire him again. And we could go on and on with this. So I think is a is a contradiction of authority here when we look at B and look at F. I agree with and that, you. And that's that's my that's my suggestion. I don't know how what what we could do to combine the two. Well, I think it strikes F to to a certain degree, and it also strikes for. Uh, I hate having to flip through this thing. I apologize. It would also strike 4.09. We would have to come up with a better wording for what we are attempting to do here with the powers and duties of the president. And my recommendation is certainly that we look very carefully at PAR's recommendation to the appropriate wording because, you know, this is an, an organization that uh, is has a great reputation, uh, certainly is considered one that uh, has the citizens at its interest in its core. So I, I'm, I would like for us to really thoroughly look at what they recommended be the wording of that section under powers and duties. It may, in fact, strike F, and it may strike uh, further back. Ms. Manda, does I, I know what Ms. Ms. Cashew and Mr. Lupus say, but in paragraph B, is that pertaining just to the department heads? Or is it pertaining to all employees? Uh, the language says officers and department heads. Uh -huh. Correct. And does F, does that pertain to Every officers employee. or does it pertain to anyone? Any employee. Any employee. So in other words, it's, it's both, or, or say, it's two different things we are trying to discuss right now. The appointment of department heads and officers and the the firing and reinstating of an employee, right? Correct. So would that be necessary to put that together? Should we put that together or should we no, yeah, keep it separated or put it together? It, it really it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. And once, once you all let me know what you're trying to accomplish, you know, we can come up with the appropriate wording. Okay. Ms. Cascio? I'm not suggesting either that they put be put oh, together. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm suggesting that it, it that there's this whole section probably needs to be reworked in the appropriate legal language. And what I would like to try to accomplish, and, and I think what we need is a is you know some feedback from the other members if they are trying to accomplish the same thing I am, yes, which is to give the parish president the power to hire his department heads and fire his department heads, they serve at his pleasure. I have a comment. Mr. Jim. In, in all of the uh, charters that I reviewed, uh, let's say paragraph B or section B, the wording was identical, everything. This was always found in the charter. On every one of them that I reviewed, it was he, the president, appointed them, but they had to be ratified by Absolutely. the council. Right. But they were so, served at the pleasure of the president. I understand, but, but what I'm saying is, if, you, if you're trying to accomplish something about him terminating them, then we should leave section B as is and maybe look at the termination part at That's somewhere correct. else. Oh, section, uh, okay. Ms. Cashier, do you? Un yeah, I would do be you, I'm fine okay. with that. All as right. long as we, as we make sure we address inside this same section the issue of, the, of at whose pleasure those huh. department heads serve. I agree that it, they should be ratified by the council. But it, it can't be left out of this section at whose pleasure those department heads serve. But paragraph B is not where that would go. And, and yeah. Exactly. I think, I, yeah. would, in other words, we're saying what well, we're... Mo Mo I'm sorry. Motion to accept B as is. We got a motion on the floor to accept B as we're is. We're going to still second. address... Yeah. We got a second. Okay. Open for discussion. Vote. Do we have a vote on it? All in favor? Uh -huh. of leaving B as is. Aye. Against. Motion passes. Let's take paragraph C. The past president. Be consistent in the government authority. Maybe is there any any comments on paragraphs? I mean, uh, paragraph C. No. No. 
And is that the area that you discussed that we? No. No. Mm -mm. Okay. Do I have a motion on the floor? Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Diane. Could you give me, um, or for instance, has this occurred before? Uh, in the last administration, the parish president served as the manager of drainage before the split. So that would be an example of when yeah, this occurred. Currently, something currently? No, not to my knowledge. Motion to leave as is. I second. Got a motion to second on floor. Any discussion on paragraph C? All in favor? Aye. 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 Against. Motion passes. Next paragraph D. Any comments on paragraph D? Mr. Poche. Mr. Chairman, since yes. we have agreed, <clears throat> this committee has agreed to change the structure of the parish president's salary. Uh -huh. It is my understanding that the uh, sheriff has um, some additional funding that comes to him, I think, like his office expenses or whatever. I'd like for it to be clear at this point that whenever I made the original motion, it did not, it did not include any of those things. Is that, is that clear to you, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir, but uh, going back to uh, paragraph B in uh, section 302, compensation, yeah. that gives him his reimbursement of expenses and stuff. Right. And now, what it, I don't quite understand what you're asking now. Because it's not clear to me exactly uh, what all the sheriff gets besides his base salary. My intent was that he get the base salary of the sheriff. If the sheriff gets a uh, whatever, that's separate issue altogether. The the only oh, the, the parish president, by uh, ordinance of this parish council, you know I think he gets all the bill to ride in and things of that nature. That's not what we discussed it here. I was talking about strictly money. His base his base salary pay, base, base salary. pay. And I just wanted I to make that clear. That was in his I just wanted to make that clear. I think that was made in your motion that it would be just his base salary. Any more discussions on paragraph B? D. I mean, excuse me, D. Mm -hmm. I think I got you. Miss Diane. I just want to be clear. This means compensation from the parish? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I would think so because it's parish uh -huh. uh, parish. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not making myself clear. What other needs of there be for him to be compensated other than his salary? Uh, I, th I think this refers to um, other jobs, other positions elsewhere. That he's not I think so, too. In other words, if he had a part yeah, I mean, that's what I was trying parish. to ask. I mean, yes. is, is, is this pertaining only to the payroll of the parish? No, no this applies to all compensation. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Motion to leave as is. Do I have a second? Got a second? Oh, I got a motion in the Second on the floor to leave as is. Open for discussion. All in fa Do I have a vote? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion passes. Paragraph E. I think this is coming in, Ms. Cascio, if you read. I think some of this now. In paragraph E and F is coming into what you were asking earlier. Dude, it's yeah. open for discussion on I paragraph E. And I, th I think I've made my position clear on it. I, I, I feel like we need to, to have a appropriate wording to allow the parish president to hire his department heads, have those department heads ratified by the council and the, it, the language states that, as it does in all the charters that I have reviewed, that those department heads serve at the pleasure of the president. Well, E, e is, is not, still not the paragraph. No, it, it states the removal, so yeah. mm -hmm. uh -huh. I think that would cover your, yeah. That's your it removal. So. consolidated into one 
time we combine the two, take them and look at them together. That's what you're saying. I mean, the president certainly, we are on E. The mm -hmm. president has the power to remove all employees. I, I think that's, mm -hmm. that goes without saying. Uh, let's leave that paragraph as is there. No, I'm good with that. You have a motion on the floor to leave paragraph E as is. Motion. Motion. Second. Got a second. Any discussion? Any further discussions? Do I have a vote? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion passes. Move on to paragraph F. It's open for discussion. Mr. Porsche. If I may, Mr. Chairman, in the original charter, this was given plenty, of, paragraph F was given plenty of discussion. <clears throat> and after all of this discussion, it was determined, and, and the reason that is, this is in here is that it's a check and balance system. Simple that, nothing else. And I understand that, but I think that the, the Human Resources Department also offers that checks and balances. And the, it also, this, this particular position for it breeds conflict. Well, it, Mr. Porsche? Mr. Shaver? As I recall, when we did a, went through the interviews, uh, since the institution of the charter, that there was an occasion that came up where an employee was terminated and he had to be reinstated. Um, and that was at the, uh, at the recommendation of an attorney. That's what I was told. And I think it, it fell under this rule here. And it was only like one time, I think. So to me, like you said, it was a check and balance, and it appeared to have worked under, under, that, under that issue, under that circumstance, because the council had to go to the attorney, and the attorney made a recommendation to reinstate the employee, although he had been terminated. So that's something, I don't know, we might have to look at that a little harder, you know. <coughs> I, I'm not sure. We have a, we do have a human resources department, and reading their description, there is a review board, that review board is made up of the members of the parish appointed by the president. But whenever that review board uses its authority, it can recommend that an employee be reinstated. The parish president can overrule or go along with that. And then at that point, at that point, the council is brought in to vote. So the, the checks and balances, in my opinion, stays in place as a result of the Human Resources Department. And in, with department heads, it is that all over this state, they serve at the discretion and at the pleasure of the parish president. They are not able to be reinstated. And these are not, I'm not referring to people who are you know, out there doing the job every day, working, cutting grass, doing the the day-to-day -day operations on a, of the parish. I'm referring to department heads, and I think that that this is the spot or somewhere in this section that needs to clarify that they serve at the pleasure of the president, and they cannot be reinstated by the council. I think that one of the reasons for my position on that is that you have micromanaging of the departments by the council, and that is not their responsibility. The parish president should be managing his departments. And I think it would also help in having those councilmen know that they cannot set an agenda with a department. They need to go through the office of the president, which is an issue that we will take up later. But it is certainly, uh, it, would, it would be the first step in placing the responsibility for the department heads on the parish president, placing their responsibility to the parish president, and it's just what I believe is, is the best way to do it. I think that's what Parr recommends is done, and uh, certainly the parish president currently thinks so. The parish president previous thought so. So this is something that uh, obvious we obviously we need to look at very thoroughly. Again, you just might want to look at the only time they could be reinstated. You're talking about a two-third vote of the council. That was placed in there on uh, a two-third vote of the council. Also. So now, to that, me, 
I mean, that's that's enough check and balance for me. But that's just my, my opinion. Let, you know. Ms. Ms. Cashier, maybe I'm reading this wrong, but help me with this. It says reinstating of any employee who has been removed by the president. Uh -huh. Should Are you saying that should say department heads instead of any employee? Or should it say both, any employee or a department head? I don't think that that one can say both. I think it has uh -huh. to say one thing for one and one thing for the other. Mm -hmm. We have an issue about our department heads that needs to be clarified, and we may be able to get some information from, from legal about, but I, I feel sure it, it has to fall in this section somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where. If we if we label it J, I, I don't know what we do with it, but I believe that it has to fall in somewhere that department heads are a different animal. Mr. Porsche. Uh, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> well, uh, she's actually correct that we do have a review committee, but they have absolutely no power other than to make recommendations. They make recommendations back to the person who fired the person. And if, if you'll, uh, you know it as well as I do, yeah. but if, if you go back and read that, and I, I just did this afternoon, they make that recommendation to the person who fired the person, and then he, he can go to the council. He has the choice to go to the council. Exactly. The council don't have a choice to act independently. I don't believe the council should have a choice to act independently, but that's just my personal feeling. I, I understand. A bunch of us. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I respect your opinion on that. The, the, the thing that I'm telling you that this particular paragraph was given plenty of consideration, and the reason that it states it exactly like it does was for a check and balance. And that if you, if we follow what you just said, there would be no check and balance. It go to the review board. Review board says, well, you ought to reinstate him, and he gives it back to the parish president. The parish president said, no, I don't want to. That's the end of the subject matter. I don't, maybe I misread the, well, the section. I think we probably need to review the Human Resources Department, but it says that, um, let's see, that they have to hold hearings. Any hearing the review board shall submit uh, there are recommendations to the parish president. The decision made by the president in these matters shall be final unless overruled by a two-thirds majority vote of the governing authority. Mm -hmm. So there is a, a protection there. We might have to find a vehicle by which this person gets their appeal in front of the council, but obviously the, the measure exists to do that. The protection exists. It's... And I'm certainly not arguing for the, an average employee of the parish to be separated out of this. I'm suggesting that our department heads need to be separated out of this, and I'm not sure. I'm struggling with where that goes. Let me, let me see if I'm reading you right. Maybe I'm, I'm a misunderstanding. You're saying that if I'm reading this correctly, and please correct me, it says, the, it says, however, the governing authority shall have the power to reinstate any employee who has been removed by the president, but only by a two-thirds vote of the member of the governing authority. Meaning that it won't be easy. In other words, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm saying, we say mm -hmm. any employee, that includes department heads. Correct. And it says any right. Well, what my question to you is, you're saying... We should take the department heads away from this and give it to the to the human resource to where if the parish president cannot work with a department head and he lets or fires or, or terminates that particular department head, that it would have to be settled in the human resource and not going back to the parish council? I think any issue has to be settled in human resources okay. through the appropriate human resources channels, which provide for the protections. I also, if I can finish, sure, I think definitely. there is a point at which there should be a separation of the department heads, and those department heads, like the department heads of parish presidents all over this state, serve at the pleasure of the president. Mr. Poche, human resources does not have the power to reinstate someone who was fired for reason other than uh, whatever the, the, the particular situation may be. They cannot reinstate someone. 
we put this in here so that the council, in fact, could reinstate him, but not easily. It takes a two-third vote to do so. Uh, I think that it is pretty pretty good check and balances the way it's actually written. And whether you want, we could discuss whether you want to include just parish employees or strictly just department heads. That would That's what I've been trying to decide. I, no, I but keep you, saying what, department heads, and I don't know where it goes, but it's the department heads that I'm concerned about. I, you can leave this exactly as it is for every other employee. It, it's, I, I think they're probably as covered under human resources, but if you don't think so, I'm okay with that. Then, My chief concern is where in this document do we define the power of the president of the parish to terminate one of his department heads, and that's the end of it. They serve at his pleasure, period, which is the way every other charter in our area is written, and all those folks I've talked to say that's the way it works the best. Chairman? No, yes, ma'am. Might I suggest the language for that? Yes, ma'am, please do. In this section, it can read, however, the governing authority shall have the power to reinstate any employee with the exception of department heads who has been removed by the by the president and then you can simply go to section 409 that addresses the governing authority removing the, the department heads and delete that and that would be a quick fix to accomplish what Ms. Cascio is saying. And then I have one other I have one question before we go a little bit further with this going back to section uh, paragraph B where it says uh, the governing authority, which would be members such as officers and department heads, may be as provided in this charter or by ordinance, necessary, or removal from the offices hereby provided. Would it would not removal of department heads come under paragraph B? Mm -hmm. As far as the removal of the officers or department heads, in other words, it's saying he can appoint his officers there and his department heads there, and then the last section or the last wording of the paragraph says the removal of the officers are hereby provided. Well, now, does it reflect back to any other area of the charter that covers just the removal of department heads? And 409, yes. 409. So then you're making the recommendations that we add to, to paragraph F the wording which you just said and deleting the paragraphs in article 4 of what you just said. Does everybody on this commission understand what she said? <laughs> well, I, I guess I have a problem when you, to me, because I read in paragraph B, the one you just uh, mentioned, the president have the power to appoint subject to ratification by the governing authority. Okay, in order to appoint him, you have to ratify him through the council. Check but then when, you can't, when it's time for him to get rid of him, he said, well, no, I don't want him anymore, but there's nothing the council can do now. You, you don't have any power. No check and balance. I, I have a problem with that. You know, you, it's fine for him to uh, appoint him, and, but you have to have the ratification from the council. But when it's time to fire him or get rid of him, he does it on his own, and nothing said. That's the only problem I have with it, you know. And, and I understand that point. I would make the point that the, uh, our, our federal government works that way. Um, the President of the United States appoints his department heads, they are ratified by the Congress, but they serve at his pleasure. If they cease to please him, they're gone. And I, I think that that is a power that ought to be afforded our parish president, as it is afforded the parish presidents of all of our surrounding parishes. May I make a suggestion? Yes. That you make a motion as to what Ms. Mander the wording Ms. Mander made in relation to this paragraph. I'd, I'd be happy to. I, two different yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I think that we have, you know, the problem is that Section 303 needs work in its, probably in its entirety as far as how it, or perhaps just only up to Section F. I, I'm not real sure. I think we're going to need a whole lot of help from Mandy. To, uh, to understand how this thing needs to be laid out. And, I mean, excuse me for Ms. Mann. Ms. Mann, would you repeat again what you, your suggestion that we do that would, that would accomplish 
what Ms. Cascio is trying to say, that would a cut would be put forth in a motion to see whether or not this council would either accept or deny or pass it on as far as a motion is concerned. Would you please re read, re-say re re that again? Uh, paragraph F, however, the governing authority shall have the power to reinstate any employee with the exception of department heads who have been removed by the parish president, but only upon a two-thirds vote of the members of the governing authority. Now, we would also delete section 409, removal of department heads under the power of the governing authority. Don't we also need some wording that provides at whose pleasure those department heads serve? So in other words, that I, I pose that as a question. Oh, no, no. Really we also that need necessary because if we remove the governing authority's um, power to reinstate them, then obviously they will serve at the parish president's okay. uh, pleasure. However, if you feel more comfortable with that language, I think that would be addressed in B. I think it clarifies that. Uh, and certainly, if, if you want to clarify that, I think it should be done in paragraph B. It, it does in every other charter that I've reviewed. It, it specifies. It in, makes in what it paragraph, ma'am? In paragraph B. Okay. Uh, Ms. Diane, I'm sorry. I've been passing you over. Uh, I am not comfortable with us uh, voting on our recommendation for this particular item tonight. Um, I think it warrants a little more advice from legal, and I would also like to wait until more members are here in meeting to discuss and share their feelings about it. This is a serious issue. Um, I would like to make a motion that we not uh, vote on this issue tonight and put it on the agenda again. I'd be happy to second that. I, I think it warrants a lot of discussion. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Any discussions? Any further discussions? All in favor that we refer this back to a later date and get more legal uh, you know, input into this uh, paragraph F. We'll have to wait, I think, for Mr. All in favor. Mr. Poche to come yeah. back. Well, yeah. We'll need to wait for Mr. Poche yeah, to return, to. so we. Okay, we have a member that's uh, had to be had to leave for a second or two. We'll wait on that vote. No. Yeah. What's yeah. No, no, she made a motion that that we that we defer it. No, that's what I'm saying. We're gonna make a motion to defer it to that we not act on paragraph F at this time. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, F and anything that resolved. Chairman, you, yes, you can just table this item and it won't require a vote. I, so if you if you'd like to move on without Mr. Poche, then this item will be tabled until further. Um, mm -hmm. Sure, fine. I'm good with that. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, then we can move into paragraph G. Uh, there's no problem with that. And I make a motion that we, if you want one, that we move on with that one. <laughs> but Mr. Pochet's not back yet. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Pochet, you're running short. We tabled F. We tabled uh, motion. Uh, I mean, uh, paragraph F has been tabled for, for further discussion and legal research. Now we're open for discussion of paragraph G. I make a motion. We uh, leave it as it is. Second. I have a motion and a second on the floor. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion passed. Paragraph H. Open for discussion. I'll make a motion. We uh, leave it as it is. Second. 
And a motion to leave as is. Motion to second. Any further discussions? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion passed. Paragraph I. Have any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. We're still not there, Linda. Oh, I'm sorry. Major drainage. No. I'm still not there. <laughs> <laughs> don't, let, don't let me pass. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Robert. I'm going to give you a hard time on that. this paragraph also. <laughs> Let's get back to I. Do I have a motion on the floor and a second to leave as is? All in favor? Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Diane? I, I would like further discussion on the same lines as Mr. Poche. Please explain to me how does the drainage board fit into this particular? She said that it fit in this paragraph, but it looked like it would. Well, the drainage board will, is considered a special board. It's, um, but here, the parish president, I don't even know that you consider this a power. All that he, all he does is monitor and report to the council. So he, he doesn't have control over the drainage board under this paragraph. I think if you want the council to control drainage, that would be best addressed in the powers of the governing authority, which is section four. Okay. Well, it does use the language special boards, though. Right, but but again, I don't, I don't think this gives the parish president much power. All he's doing is monitoring and reporting to the council any fiscal impact um, of those special boards or commissions. I see. I I see what Miss Manda said. All all the past president in this paragraph, in my view, is he's just monitoring it and reporting back to the uh, past council or the governing body. Motion to leave as is. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? One against. <laughs> Motion passes. We'll move on to section 3-04, presidential <coughs> vetoes. Open for discussion. I'll second. There's a motion on the floor. Do we have any further motion a second on the floor? Do we have any further discussion on section three oh four? Presidential veto. I think that uh, uh, you know, part of part of they had some comments on that particular section. On, uh, but who was it? That being said, I would still agree to leave section three point oh four as is. Fine. Just pointing out that they had some discussion on it. Okay. I, I, I noticed that, Mr. Robert, but it didn't seem to make not much sense. I, I think the way it is now is the time frames work real well. I don't think we should change it. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> I was just pointing out that they had discussed that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have a motion and a second on the floor. All in favor of leaving. Section 304, presidential veto, as is. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion passes. Next item will be Section 308, presidential temporary absence. Mm, three, I mean, I'm sorry, 308. 305. 305, sir. 305. Oh, no. Wait. 305. Not on the agenda. Three is not on the agenda. Three not on the agenda. No, it's three oh eight. No, I was okay. no. That's going by the agenda, uh Correct. Mr. Luke. Okay. The next the next section section on the agenda would be three oh eight presidential temporary absence. On three oh eight. Yeah. Yes, sir. So open for discussion. Yes, Mr. Luke. Mr. Chairman, I have a uh, suggestion on uh, Section 308, President's Temporary Absence. Uh -huh. And uh, I got it. When the President 
expects to be absent from the parish for more than seven consecutive days, the president shall notify the chairman of the governing authority in writing of the expected duration of his absence. The powers and duties of office shall be exercised by the chief administrative officer or in the absence of the chief administrative officer, the president designee. This is only changing it from 72 consecutive hours to seven consecutive days. And that is recommendation. Open for discussion. Seems reasonable to me. Yeah. I think the 72 hours, hours was yeah. a little obsolete. Yeah. We have cell phones and fax machines yeah. and text messaging and What do you think? I, I, I understand what you're saying about modern technology, but I, I like it as is. 72 hours, I mean, we need somebody here in, in the event that, that there is some kind of disaster, or however you, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be that the parish president would need to be here. Uh, I, I like the wording as it is. What was the motion? Seven Just days. Seven days. I second the motion. Seven days. I like to change that. See that amendment change to the seven days. Okay, we have motion on the floor and a second. Any further discussions? Yes. She amended it. No, she won't you am leave it as you amending the motion? Oh, she you just, I think she just said leave it as is. Yeah, okay. It wasn't, amended. Mr. Porsche. <clears throat> yeah, I'd like for uh, Mr. Luke to clarify the, the reason for changing it from the 72 hours to seven days. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not clear on that. Okay. Mr. Uh, Luke? Mr. Poche, on, on talking to uh, two of the past presidents, uh, from what I can understand, that the seven days would be a lot uh, more accomplished due to the fact that they, if they go to Washington, D.C., take for instance, they do it in, you know, it's, it's done more than three days, yeah. and they're out of the parish for that, you know, that duration of time. And I asked for a, uh, give me a, a, for instance, and they said, well, to meet all the people that they have to meet in Washington, D.C. at a certain time, they need more than three days. So I said, well, give me a, give me a frame, time frame. And uh, both of them suggested uh, seven days. That's why I made that recommendation. Mr. Poche. Mr. Chairman, maybe I'm misunderstanding what we're trying to accomplish on this. The whole point of this was that if the parish is going to be gone from this parish for a, a certain length of time, that we do have someone still in parish that able to handle the business that comes before it at that particular time. We un understand that if it's just a day or so, that probably is, it's unnecessary, but uh, in a week's time, there, there's plenty of things that can happen in the parish. I think that someone should be in parish that's able to make a decision on something that comes up. If I had my choice, I'd make it uh, 48 hours, but uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll go along with the majority of the vote of the, of the commission. But the intent, keep in mind, the intent was just to have somebody in charge. Ms. Diane. If you read it, it says, the president shall notify the chairman of the governing authority in writing of the expected duration of the absence. All we're talking about is the parish president signing a letter prior to leaving the parish for 72 hours. I don't care for waiting until there's something wrong and needing someone in authority here to have to use technology in any way to start authoring a letter or a document for the parish president to sign while he's away from the parish. I mean, it's simply a letter that the parish president signs telling the, governing, uh, the chairman of the governing authority that he is, is going to be absent and that the powers and duties of the office shall be exercised by someone else. I mean, we are living in the day of terrorism. We have um, 
we, we have a numerous amount of things that we could have problems with in our parish, and all he's got to do is sign a letter before he leaves. I, I, don't, I don't see the point in changing this at all. It, it does more than him having to sign a letter. It also authorizes someone else to be in charge. Correct. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make light of that, yeah. but I mean, what uh, you know, tell me what is what is so bad about putting someone else in charge if you're not going to be here? What's the flip side of that? Well, f first of all, if I'm reading it right, it would be he would be putting the chief administration officer in charge. Mm -hmm. That's and correct. only if mm -hmm. that chief administration officer is gone, yeah. then it would be a designated right. person. That's correct. If I'm reading that right, that's correct. Okay. If I may make a comment, I, I really don't have a strong opinion on this one way or the other, but I, if I leave my business there's someone there that's in charge to some degree but at the same time I'm still in charge and I handle my business by phone by text by email by whatever means possible so I think that the perhaps the what the parish president is trying to accomplish when he makes this kind of request is to say he doesn't want to have to appoint somebody else he's still in charge now and you know, if he's going to be gone more than seven days, then yeah. perhaps he needs to certainly leave someone else in charge. But in, in a brief time frame, perhaps 72 hours, it's not necessary for him to have someone else in charge. He's still in charge. That may be where the issue is. I, I'm not, I didn't speak to either one of them. I, I did see it uh, in, I did hear it in Ronnie's comments, and I did see Sorry. that in Tommy's comments. I suspect that that's what they're thinking is that they are already they are still in charge and they have the technology with which to remain in charge. And this may be another one of those we need to table so there's more of us here to have some some significant input in it. I used to have a motion sure. Yeah. You make you making a motion red yes, in a second. Okay. We have motion on the floor and a second that we change from seventy two consecutive hours to seven days. All in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. All all against. Motion passes. Can I uh, can I say something, Milton? Yes. And uh let me let me uh the commissioner is now what we're making now this is not in stone Correct. you got to realize that we got to bring this to the governing authority mm -hmm. the governing authority has to approve it and after the governing authority approves it it has to go to the vote of the people so we're not we're just making recommendations that's all we're doing thank you and hopefully these recommendations have been studied real good <laughs> and hopefully we've uh, researched it to where we can make good sound recommendations where the Parish Council and the Governing Authority and the people will pass them. So, paragraph B, of section 308. Mm -hmm. Open for discussion. Do I have a motion on the floor? I make a motion. Leave it as is. I second. Got a motion on the floor. And a second to leave it as it is. All in favor? Aye. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, any further discussion? Yes. Mr. Poche. Uh, just it's the wording of it the way it's currently written. Uh -huh. If the temporary absence extends of the parish president extends more than 60 days, <clears throat> the office shall become vacant. Are we sure? Are we clear that that's what we want? Yeah, I was saying take out temporary. <laughs> Huh? Yeah, what is that temporary absence of 60 days? Uh, uh, substitute motion to uh, make that 90 days. Do I have a second on the secondary I'll motion? I'll I have a second on the secondary motion. Ms. Diane. Uh, I, I'm not prepared to agree with that because we haven't addressed section 307 vacancies if we're leaving 
in accordance with Section 307 vacancies, I would think we would need to discuss Section 307 vacancies before we decide whether or not Section 308B needs to be amended. Vacancies is a separate issue over here. But it's in the wording. Yeah. It, it says it shall be. Tells you how. Yes, sir. But we're voting on whether or not to leave it as is, and we have not discussed that section. just advised me that we can discuss section 307 vacancy so is it the consensus of this board that we uh, step back one uh, section and discuss this so that we can then come back to section 308 paragraph B Sharon you have to clear it we have, you have two motions on the floor you have to clear your motions first mm -hmm. M amended motion a secondary motion to 90 days versus 60 days all in favor well, there's any discussion amended. it's an amended to the motion to change from 60 days substitute motion, to a substitute motion to change from 60 days to 90 days Correct. all in favor Aye. 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 motion passed Now the original motion was it dies. It's gone. It's no more. It's gone. It's gone. Substitute motion passed. Mm-hmm. So let's go back and look at it. Now we need to go back and look at, at section three oh seven vacancies. <coughs> Open for discussion. Miss Diane. I'm fine with Section A, sir. I'll make a motion to leave as is. Section 307? Section 307A. A. A. Do I have a second? I have a motion to second to leave Section 307, Paragraph A, as is. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Paragraph B. Open for discussion. I think the language is real, real good as written. The only discussion that we, we could possibly have would be um, if you want to leave it at the one year or six months or whatever, so you, before you call an election. That's the only point of contention I've, I've ever heard about that particular section. So it's not even Robin, Robin, uh, <coughs> is that the state law that they got one year? Is that when the home rule charter was put in, was that per state law? It was not. It was not. It was well. I, I can't tell you that that's not the state law. Yeah. I can tell you that that was not the consideration to put this in there that way. Okay. I I, I don't know what the state law is. Yeah. Okay. I can comment that several other home rule charts that I read has the exact same thing as yeah. what's here. That it's it's all pretty much the same thing. Motion to leave it as is. We got a motion on the floor and a second on the floor. Leave it as, as leave as is. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion. Aye. 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 Against. Motion passes. Paragraph C, section 307, paragraph C. Open for discussion. I can't envision that happen to me, <laughs> but should it happen, I, I, I think that the language is as well as it is written. I'd like to make a motion we leave it as it is. I'll second. <laughs> Excuse me. We have a motion and a motion and the second on the floor to leave paragraph C as is. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Against. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, we'll go back to the agenda. 
Now, let me make a comment on this, uh, Commission members. The reason we went from, like, Article 3 to Article 8 was we tried to take some articles that are short and some articles that are long. So we're going to go now to Article 8. Let me... Article 8. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Okay, uh, we can discuss Article 8, Section 801, Legal Proce Procedures. I got a comment, Mr. Chairman. Any comments? Mr. Luke. Uh, Robert, can I address this toward you, me and y'all went? Uh, you certainly may. It says the legal process against the parish shall be served upon the president or in his absence upon the secretary. Yeah. Now, the secretary being the secretary of the parish president or the parish secretary parish secretary mm. okay mm. you think we need to put it as such in wording or i would have no objection to stating it more clearly if that would be your desire <laughs> okay uh, yeah. <clears throat> i'd like to I'll just I'd just like clarify just for clarification in the, in the event that we end up with uh, council secretary then i think we need to be yeah. more specific yes. in the wording of that language or it's going to come back to bite us later on any further discussion do i have a motion <coughs> motion to amend motion to amend Second. amendment being that uh in his absence upon the parish secretary being the change the amendment I second. Have a motion and a second on Article 8, Section 801. Any further discussions? No. All in favor? Aye. Against? Aye. Motion passed. We will now go to Article 11. Article 11, Section 1101, now open for discussion. Feasibility. Any discussion? Do I have a motion to leave as is? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to leave as is. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No, it passes. At this point in time, like to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. <laughs> we didn't get to it. <laughs> 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 we go. We be we did. So we, did, we did a couple things we need to do. Okay. We take into consideration. So we don't want Oh, what you and I talked about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, yo, so now you're. Now y'all make me make it up every week, uh-huh. Good. Well, I like this.